Hello people and welcome to another BTEC. I'm David and today I've got another XZ3 video for you. I've been testing out the single lens motion eye camera setup on the XZ3, which I think is now pretty unique among major flagships, barring of course the Pixel series. So what makes Sony think that one lens is enough to compete with some of the amazing double and triple lens setups we've seen this year? And there's even rumours that we could see four or even five camera lenses across the back of devices very soon. But Sony have stuck with the single 19 megapixel cameras before. No change to the hardware, just software changes, on which on the face of it sounds a little bit underwhelming. But thinking about it, that was one of the major problems that let the XZ2 down. That and the lack of stabilisation. Daytime performance of the XZ2 was great. It was in low light where it fell behind. So I'm going to go over some camera samples with you and we can see if Sony have addressed these issues and if the Xperia XZ3 can keep up with the rest. But before we get into this one, I want to tell you about a site called Direct Mobiles. If you're looking for a new phone, then this is definitely a site you want to have a look at. Amazing deals on contract or SIM free and a great selection of the latest phones. Plus they have an impressive 23 years of award winning customer service. So check them out. Check the video description below for a link to their website or search directmobiles.co.uk. Now back to the XZ3. So what exactly are we dealing with here? Well, let me start with the front camera, as that is actually different. It's a 13 megapixel Exmor R sensor with a 23 millimeter equivalent full frame view and f1.9 brightness. You get HDR and portrait selfies with this front camera. The performance is good. I find the color accuracy to be very good and dynamic range is definitely not the worst that I've seen. Nighttime shots are pretty good too. Noise and grain being well suppressed at high ISOs and it will use screen illumination as a flash when it's needed. Front video is shot at 1080p 30 frames per second and uses Sony's SteadyShot 5 axis gyroscopic EIS system and it works pretty well. I've got no problems with the front camera at all. Now one thing I loved about the XZ2 was the physical camera shutter button. It made it a pleasure to use by letting you half press to lock focus then fully press to shoot. When you press the shutter button halfway, it kind of locks the screen momentarily, sort of like it's using some kind of electronic stabilization, but there's no official word that it does. But if you look at these photos, there is motion below with the moving objects, yet these were taken handheld. This one was shot at 1 16th of a second. Could it be that it's partially using some form of EIS, but not the branded Sony SteadyShot type, so therefore they're not mentioning it? The photos in low light certainly seem to be assisted by some form of stabilization. And Sony's advice for getting good shots in low light is to half press the shutter button, then take the shot. The rear camera uses the same hardware as the XZ2, the 19 megapixel motion eye camera with predictive phase detection and laser autofocus and f2.0 Sony G lens, which they say is award winning. And it's very sharp, getting you excellent pictures. But, and it's quite a big but, this lens flares incredibly easily, more so than any other smartphone I've tested in a while. If you're shooting towards any kind of light source, the flaring is quite strong and it's worse when the light source is coming from the side. The fact that it's so easy to mistake the camera lens for the fingerprint scanner doesn't help the flaring either. And I've been very conscious of this whilst I've been taking my photos, always cleaning the lens. So I can't put it down to just having a smudge lens. But when it's not flaring, the lens is sharp. It seems like there's a bit more touching up with the photos going on than on the XZ2. Things like extra sharpening being added, but it's quite subtle and nowhere near to the extent of some of the competition. Compared to the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, the colors are not quite as bright and punchy, but they are more accurate. I said it before in my unboxing of the XZ3, that the XZ2 was the camera to go for if you preferred a more traditional type of photography and were not into the double and triple lens setups and you'd rather process the photos yourself. It seems like the same is true again for the XZ3, except this time you're getting a pretty handy low light camera thrown in. I say pretty handy, but my early tests are saying that the low light is not quite as good as some of the big boys. And you can see that here when it's compared to the HTC U12 Plus, which is rated as having the best dual camera system around. Although the XZ3 is head and shoulders above what the XZ2 could achieve in low light, it's still not quite as stunning as what the HTC is producing. If only they could have fitted an optical stabilizer in here. But the Sony seems to be relying on using higher ISO settings and noise reduction from the Exmor RS sensor. So if we have the same hardware as the XZ2, then why didn't it perform very well in low light? Well, all the changes on the XZ3's rear camera are software based and now take better advantage of the hardware's capabilities. The camera app's been revised too. You have a button to switch modes on the lower left and your most recently used modes just above that. Click the mode button and you're presented with different shooting modes. We have portrait selfies, Google lens, bokeh, slow motion, AR effect, manual mode, 
the very cool creative effects, I'll get to that in a bit, and panorama and sound photo. The user interface is well laid out and has everything you might need to hand, with you only really needing to go into the settings to change the resolution. There's also a very nice gesture launch system, so if you pick up the phone and hold it up in landscape mode, the camera will automatically activate. One thing about the portrait modes in this camera, that being portrait selfie for the front camera and bokeh for the rear camera, is that they work in two totally different ways. The rear camera relies on you to first tap the object that you want to focus on and then hold the camera very still while it takes two photos. If anything moves in the frame, it will fail to switch the two photos together and can be a little bit frustrating. Portrait selfie on the other hand only needs to take one picture and you don't need to tell it what to focus on. So you just point and shoot. Light gathering seems to take a bit of a hit in this mode though and the quality is not quite as good as what you would get with the rear camera. Things like the kaleidoscope or the mirroring effect are very cool and there's a bunch of other interesting effects too. Usually I wouldn't bother with the filters in a camera app because they're mostly the same and not really that good but these genuinely are worth a look. But it's video performance where the XZ3 really stands out. Sony's SteadyShot 5-axis stabilization system works very well in all video formats including 4K HDR. The XZ2 used to skip frames when shooting in this mode but Sony have seemed to take care of this problem. Performance is now smooth and picture quality is very impressive, let down only by the flaring from the lens. I'm a little disappointed that there's no 4K at 60 frames per second. Frame rate at this resolution is fixed at 24, but image quality is fantastic. And the stabilization with a good high ISO performance means great videos in low light. So I shouldn't be too disappointed. Light gathering and stabilization improves when you drop down to 1080p and 60 frames per second is also available at this resolution. Of course, Sony's trademark 960 frame per second super slow motion is back. I haven't really noticed any improvement here. It still shoots a 2 tenth burst for 720p and a 1 tenth burst for 1080. Lots of light is still needed too. In anything other than bright sunshine, you'll get a little bit of grain. But the results are so good that we don't care about that. The pro mode gives you control of all the usual camera settings, ISO, white balance, exposure compensation and so on. But the longest exposure possible is only one second, so you won't be doing any light trails with long exposures. But that pro mode has given me a chance to test out the ISO performance of this camera. The max ISO is a massive 12,800. If you compare that to the S9 Plus, whose max ISO is just 800, this is how the XZ3 can deliver good shots at night without optical stabilization. As you can see from these shots, at max ISO, it still delivers relatively clean images. So in these pictures, I've set the ISO to max and adjusted the shutter speed. And although the results are not perfect considering the extremely high ISO settings, they are relatively clean. Compare this to the S9 Plus, which I've also set to its max ISO setting of 800. Both images end up with a fair amount of noise, a little bit more so with the Sony, but if you consider how much higher the ISO setting is with the Sony, then this is actually doing a very good job. This is a little bit frustrating because if they put optical stabilization in this phone, it would be a seriously good low light tool. There's a lot of tech reviewers that complain about how Sony insists on putting a high megapixel count in with their rear facing camera, claiming that lots of megapixels will produce more noise, which is why all of the major manufacturers keep their rear cameras at or below 12 megapixels. But the reason Sony sticks with the high megapixel count is because the technology allows them to. The ISO performance on this sensor is so good that it doesn't need a stabilizer to produce pleasing shots in very low light. But Sony are just not selling that fact very well. Optical stabilization would have given this camera amazing low light capabilities. And I think it would have made a lot of people sit up and pay attention. Without OIS, it's still very good, but it's not quite as good as some of the other flagships. So altogether a big improvement over the XZ2, but still no stabilizer for photo. I really think it would have made it one of the best low light shooters around, just like its brilliant range of full frame mirrorless cameras. They are known as the kings of low light, and I think it would have been quite fitting if the Sony flagship handset was famous for the same thing. Anyway, that's it from me. If you're interested, I will leave a link in the description below to all the photo and video samples used in this video, so you can have a look at the original files for yourself. So have a look and let me know what you think of the performance in the comments below. Is it an improvement over the XZ2? And how do you think it compares to the S9 Plus? Drop me a comment and let's have a chat about it. If you made it all the way to the end, thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button for me and subscribe for more videos like this. I'm David Wildman and this was BTech.